Welcome to season two episode. Uh, I don't know. I ca- I think I kind of lost track, but you can figure that out yourself. Of the Art Brunch archives, each week on Twitch we bring in a new contemporary artist to talk about their work, drink tasty bevs, hang out with us, you know, do their thing. I'm the host of Art Brunch, Rick Bowling. The most recent Art Brunch episodes are exclusively on Twitch for two weeks, but then every week we're uploading an edited show to podcast and to YouTube. YouTube will host the art part of the conversation so you can see which images we're referencing. If you want to hear all of the hijinks of the show, like the canned crucible and the 10 questions of triumph, you have to head over to the podcast. Please take a moment right now to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode here. Uh, Those subscriptions really help us out. It's totally free for you on YouTube. Give it a shot. And lastly, I got to plug watching the show live with our awesome community on Twitch. It's so much fun. You get to engage in real time with the artist. It's the way that the show's intended to be. All of these links and more are available in the description. Our guest this week is Chloe Simmons. She's got a great artist statement, and I'll read that for you now. There's something about all of this constant chaos, everything happening simultaneously all the time that feels so mundane. Like it has always been there, like it is supposed to be there, another everyday spectacle. Truth is as liquid as the past, and with a little heat, facts and moments seem to quickly evaporate, forever lost to time. The work is not occupied with truth. The work maintains the gray area, cozy in the warm comfort of contradiction and chaos. You can always count on those guys. You know them when you see them. They have always been there, concrete in their negation of the ideologies and infrastructures we idealize as the backbone of our civilization. The artwork is often uncomfortable, but reaches for the familiar. My lip gloss is too tacky and my tennis shoes slightly pinch my baby toe. Humor is crucial in uncomfortable situations. Fetish is everywhere. The work is a product of the internet, often constructed using various systems of production and bits of digital debris, information, media, and material, leaving their impression to be inspected, questioned, interpreted, and synthesized. The resulting artwork is often in the form of an object, consumer product, fashion, video, or some combination of these moving from one idea to the other, tethered by thin conceptual strands. It's all right there. If it were a snake, it would have bit you. So take, take time to, you know, prepare yourself and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Welcome us back to the show. We are here. My name is Rick. I am co-host of Art Brunch and founder of the Travel Agency. I um, have been enjoying the conversation so far personally. I'm about halfway through my Twisted Tea. Um, and, you know, we're just going to keep this thing rolling. Uh, in this next segment here, we're going to uh, try and potentially succeed at talking about Chloe's artwork. Uh, But I think we kind of already have, you know, in a roundabout way. Welcome back to the show, friends. Hi. I saw you. I I wanted to switch over when you were looking longingly at your twisted tea. Oh, I was trying to figure out how much alcohol was in it. Like, I was looking at the bottom, but it's right there at the top. 5%, right? 5%? We're vibing with five. Yeah. Good. It's a yeah. whole five vibe for sure. Do you have a plan of attack when you have to crack that next one? I guess like undo the tape. Well, so mm. somebody pointed out to me when I was downstairs doing this this morning. Um, uh, cause I, uh, anyway, they pointed out that um, uh, I should have had this one upside down so that oh. I could just... Yeah. But then wow. also... I would have gotten probably like tea sprinkles yeah. tea on my bed. But that's yeah. why you put the rubber sheets right. on. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. My, my stash of rubber in case, sheets. <laughs> in case you get the tea on the bed. That is yeah. why you get the rubber sheets. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we're all on the, on the same page here. We're so honest, yes. 
in your bio, um, in your bio and in your artist statement, but particularly your bio, you did a BFA at Webster, which is where we first met, and you're working on your MFA in uh, 4D um, yeah. at UW Madison, uh, which I think is really great because like it's it's fun to have somebody on the show who's not like an MFA grad, but somebody who's like currently going through the process of achieving their MFA in the candidacy and, and moving through that. And, and I think that like, uh, I was talking to Jake about this before and, and tell me if I'm off base, but MFA is really like kind of the space to kick your feet a little bit and, and you know, and like be loud and, and take up space and be active in the process of like knowing that not everything that you do is gonna be perfect which is really easy to forget when artists kind of transition out of the MFA into the professional and the public sphere. Um, so I think that that's something that's really powerful about the MFA experience. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think now's the time to kind of be making the uh, stuff I'll probably be embarrassed by in the next four years. <laughs> and the things that are like kind of weird, um, I think, yeah, now is the time to be really um, doing that and just, I don't know, kind of getting out of my comfort zone doing like, uh, yeah, whatever comes to mind is really what I've been trying to push for is because um, I mean, it's hard to do everything, of course, but like, uh, I feel like um, if there's a time to just make anything that comes to mind now is it, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> um yeah so so yeah. what do does um madison have other degree programs outside of 4d and if they do what led you to choose 4d as your emphasis for your mfa um so like what the other disciplines are yeah or like what they are or what about 4d do you did like drew you to declaring that emphasis Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, I did my uh, BFA in printmaking at Webster. And I think Webster is like just kind of a really um, interesting place and has, um, I don't, it's a much more, it, it's a unique experience. Mm -hmm. I will put it that way. Um, and in a, in a really good way. I don't mean that negatively at all. Um, so when I was doing printmaking at Webster, um, I got to really do whatever I wanted and kind of like push the boundaries of printmaking. And I felt like I never really made, I, I mean, I've made traditional prints, but I never really like, um, was never really like a quote unquote, like good printmaker, you know, in that like I made these like perfectly registered, you know, 45 layer lithographs, like that's not what I was doing. Um, and uh, I started becoming really interested in video. I was working with like uh, object making, like having like um, having these sweaters made and things like that. So I was uh, definitely working with time and things like that were outside of art. So I thought it was maybe a, a better fit for me to um, study uh, 4D at other schools, they call it. Um, uh, like time-based art or things like that. Um, yeah, it just made more sense for what I was doing. And I felt like I had maybe a little more freedom. Uh, most of uh, departments where there's like time-based media or like at UW, it's called 4D. Um, they're kind of the, um, I don't know, like wanderers of the they're like the punk uh, art. Uh, yeah, like there, there's like everybody, like the 4D time-based areas, they almost always are like um, much more inter interdisciplinary than yeah. the other um, uh, uh, yeah. media I felt, um, at least whenever I was applying. So that I felt like I had like more freedom to kind of like do what I wanted. Mm. Um, yeah. As opposed to like being like stuck, like, strictly within one medium so yeah that's that's good yeah. and i think it's good that there are more opportunities for that when i when i first started going to school at kansas city art institute there was um like that department was painting like the painting department mm -hmm. was the one that was most interdisciplinary because they had yet to 
kind of have an interdisciplinary department or or have like a, a time based or an installation degree sure. program and and I think it's really good for for these educational institutions to create space for um, the more interdisciplinary aspect of mm-hmm. contemporary art making because I think I mean most everybody is is working in mixed media is working in 4D or working in in time if they're mm-hmm. a part of the contemporary conversation uh, it's yeah. kind of hard yeah. to like not do that um, I mean even with like the other types of media that we produce like Instagram is like 4d, you know, like for the (laughs) artist when, and, and the, the bridging of that between like process and product, I think is, is really interesting. And, and it's great that you can like declare that as an emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. It was, Um, I, I definitely agree with you on the, the interdisciplinary aspect. Yeah. It's interesting. Like looking at the institutions, like, um, like there are people who are or like certain areas at UW of where there's like a little more like red tape around being able to use their studios and facilities whereas like other areas are like totally open to like pretty much letting any other discipline come in and use their studio space so it's a uh, it's kind of interesting to see like what and i'm sure it's different at every university but like what um disciplines have like a little more like um, a little more of that like traditional mindset. Hmm. And Chloe, I'm curious is is for someone who's kind of new to all these worlds a little bit. Like I, I can speak on behalf of maybe the people listening, and but I, I am kind of that person anyway. <laughs> is is 4D like more of like an emerging form? Like I mean, you know, Rick just said it's like Instagram, which is <laughs> by nature a, a very recent thing. Which I, I, there's probably yeah. there's obviously a lot more to, than 4D. anyway. All I'm saying is like is that maybe like what gives it that interdisciplinary feel beyond literally being that, but also because it's more of a newer space or has 4D kind of been always around? Yeah, um, it's definitely a newer space. I mean, it's um, it's time-based art uh, is what mm-hmm. most programs will call it, but still not every program has a time-based mm-hmm. um, or like a, yeah, like, perf- so that really like encompasses like things like performance, video, um, and then, um, yeah, pretty much anything that kind of starts to deal with time or like an interdisciplinary aspect, especially at UW, I feel like. Um, but uh, I mean, that's like video it has been around for a long time um, and performance, yeah. but uh, we don't really, you, you don't really start seeing it in art history, like being called performance art until like the 60s or 70s when we start like, okay. Um, moving into yeah that era so yeah so it's like relatively new um, and I think that's why yeah and art yeah. schools would have so the, like the a... form has existed sorry like the form has existed but like the title is more like like the 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 concept of 4D itself is more recent whereas obviously the performances and stuff of it has existed for some time yeah yeah so yeah like performance art um, video art has been around for uh, a long time now, and I think it's just now starting to like have its own discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I shouldn't say just now, but um, more recently than like painting, obviously, yeah. or yeah. even painting. Um, like you'd have a film degree, a film emphasis in some mm-hmm. like MFA, BFA, MFA programs, yeah. but that's that's like very. I, f- I feel like it's potentially different from you know, like performance art, like the people that were in film, the people that were like doing video when I first started uh, to go to um, art school, they were trying to make movies, not performance shorts. And like the performance artists were in the painting department, which like doesn't make sense, but like it did make sense because painting is the thing that's like least relevant and but like also most relevant to contemporary art making in my opinion and then and then like now there are they're formalizing the types of education that you can have that is performance installation time-based media non-cinema film stuff like that and kind of all squishing that together is what what it feels like right yeah which is awesome, yeah. which like definitely needs to be there. Like it's, it's so wild that it hasn't been there. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's so it, yeah, I definitely say it's like relatively new to um, departments, but not like, um, yeah, it's not su super new, but yeah. Yeah. But there's definitely still okay. some schools that don't have it. So gotcha. um, we have we have some images here. Oh yeah. Um, so this is this is the the non four D work, but I mean that's definitely to be considered. Like yeah. to say something isn't four D work is also like well what is it? Like it does exist through time. Like it exists in all of the physical dimensions and it exists through time. So like what's what's the designation here? Well, we have a couple of these images here that you shared with us. Um, and I think that uh, I think the the one that caught you know immediately caught my attention was the the fishing whip and like your obsession potential obsession with fish. <laughs> oh yeah, so I yeah I guess I do have that like fish pillow and things. Yeah, I know those definitely <laughs> stick out. But like I think there are aspects of time like within these objects too. Mm -hmm. um, like. Well, we'll look at the shoes, I'm sure, but like also with this, there's like, I mean, you there, it's a whip, right? So it's like an object that um, I feel like is like at its fullest potential, like in motion. Like we know, like what it does. Like it's a, it's an object that's supposed to move, you know, um, and be like acted on. So there's like an element of time there. Plus, like um, also if you're like uh, thinking about like where everything in this work came from and like, you know, various parts of it were bought off of Amazon. Um, I went to like Bass Pro Shops to like get the rest, mm -hmm. you know, so there's kind of this like, um, I'm like, uh, it's like kind of working outside, uh, like buying things like outside of art to make artwork, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, Utility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's photographed very nicely too, by the way. Uh, the documentation vibes are oh, top, thanks. top notch. That was like sure. out of a um, that was out of pure necessity because I couldn't go to my studio over the summer and like late in the semester because of COVID. So I like rolled out a um, this is kind of boring to talk about, but I I got a, a shop um, talk. Yeah, a little shop talk here. <laughs> uh, what are those like window, like a window blind? Like, um, oh, yeah. it's not a curtain, but it like rolls out. I just bought one of those and kind of like made my own little photo studio so I could take pictures of what I was making because my apartment was really ugly and it had this ugly carpet and I didn't want to take photos on it. <laughs> <laughs> can't have um, that. Can't have that. No, can't have that. It was just ugly, you know, like, so yeah, that's where this came from. <laughs> yeah. And, and then sure. the, the, the shoes are i mean we have we have this other image that maybe we can speak about briefly and then and then get into the shoes because i think that's a good transition into the the video work um sure. but yeah so like with this piece here and this will come up in other ways too is is like the rehashing and the the reformatting of digital ephemera um mm -hmm. and this being like uh obviously like a photo manipulated image uh, like a web image like clip art and and kind of yes. this like digital amalgamation, but then being like printed and shown in real space, you know, mm -hmm. like like the dimension that we inhabit not being shown on a screen, but now being shown on a screen again. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, definitely. I feel like, uh, yeah, I've been um, just kind of increasingly um, pulling more and more things from the internet because there's just like so much like weird shit out there that I can just like grab and um, reuse and like uh, re-edit. So the plant in the center is actually like a 3D model that I pulled off of like some free 3D model website. And then um, the image that's like wrapped on the plant is um, uh, I've been pulling um, or compiling a lot of images of um, women suffocating in like um, uh, plastic, like PVC or like vinyl mm -hmm. bags, uh, and it's it's a kink thing. But I don't know the the images of like their faces like really like I don't know like stick with me in a certain way. I think I'm trying to figure out like what my relationship to that is. Um, I think I kind of maybe identify with that with like the expression on their faces a little bit um, mm. or like the imagery itself. And so I've been kind of like 
you know, grabbing all of these things offline, like kind of remixing them and then <laughs> making these collages um, and then uh, kind of doing the same thing with 3D animation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is so... a part of your, your process and your practice. I don't have a still of the, the sweaters, but um, the oh, yeah. pornography and the, the kink that kind of comes oh, with Oh, you froze that. for me on my end. I can't um, hear you. Can you hear me now? I think I'm frozen too for a second. Oh. Oh, no. Um, I'll just go ahead and ask a question. We'll keep the convo going real quick. Uh, oh. I think Rick's back. Well, I should be real back quick. now. Um, well, Clay, so the, okay. I'm just Rick curious. The, the, the images that you're getting of the women with the bags, is that from, like, particular media or is that like like from films or tv or just kind of wherever you find it kind of from wherever i find it there well i mean it's definitely pornographic it's um i mean i, I pull them off of like google images typically um just like search like searching for like erotic like suffocation images or you know kind of going through like any of those words um uh i could use for it and um it's really interesting, like you can see, it's like a real facial expression, you know, it's not like a staged thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's another aspect of like pornography that I find really interesting is there's this kind of like, um, uh, there's this real and fake thing happening simultaneously. Sure. Yeah. I really like, and there's this, there's this like, uh, I think for the viewer, like a, um, a simultaneous, uh, I'm actually, I know I'm, uh, quoting an, an artist that I really love who also uses pornography. Um, but there's this kind of like simultaneous um, fear and desire that like the, I think uh, viewer like that I have, I, I think too, when I, when I experience pornography. So I, I always like these like small little contradictions. And I, I think particularly those images that I see like really stick with me in a certain way. And I have to kind of like trust that instinct. Like there's a reason why this like, days with me and I need to like so I, I just harvest them and um sure. use them and so they've been kind of like sitting in the back of my mind for a while now and I kind of just started using them within the last uh, couple months yeah so. they're finally coming out of the secret folder uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, <laughs> my suffocation images file is probably really <laughs> weird for somebody to just find my hard drive <laughs> yeah <laughs> the incognito tab that's where it's coming from right exactly <laughs> yeah the um, the um the images i think i think that is it is something that uh does warrant like another another layer of of, of interaction with is that like that's not like a, a still from the shining right like we we right. can like kind of look at those and think like oh is that like a horror movie is that like psycho I, but but i thought that was megan fox honestly i was like is this a movie <laughs> that i've never seen her in or something megan fox is a a big, huge, has a huge vacuum bag kink <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised but um it's but just, or i thought it was like from black christmas or something like i i think there's yeah. some sort of that happens in that movie um but then you're but no that but it's moving away from celebrity and you're moving into like these right potentially these alternate spaces of celebrity like there mm -hmm. there are potentially women who are well known for this you know this particular genre and then there's right. there's the person who comes into the gallery and is like yo is that like sasha gray you know like is that <laughs> you know is that this person and then like having mm -hmm. that moment of like alternate celebrity or or the way that um and i i don't want to take too much but the way that like women can be experienced in these these different ways of fame these different ways of yeah. objectification in in some Absolutely. regards and in different ways of of viewership or voyeur voyeurism yeah yeah i also um another like kind of um rabbit hole i think i've been going down lately is like um looking at I'm, I'm kind of interested in the idea of like looking at something and not really knowing what you're looking at. So like mm -hmm. here you're like experiencing what would be like a potentially pornographic image, but it's like not anymore and I've changed it. And, <laughs> and, but also you don't necessarily like know that right away until you do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. So that's been another kind of, um, uh, element that i'm interested in just how we like interface and experience images online and how it's like 
um, just this kind of like constant um, barrage of things and you don't really know exactly like where they're coming from or what it is that you are experiencing right away um yeah i think we we run into that issue i think more and more as as the internet continues to fracture and have Mm -hmm. archiving problems is it like who is making this meme and yeah yeah and like there are some people that like are making memes that are consumed in context that they like are using that energy and it's like where is where is the dossier on this meme artist and their like and their mm-hmm. way of propagating their hateful ideology into the internet social sphere it's Absolutely. like like you know yeah. like, where does it like maybe it's funny but like it's not funny because of the person who made it or or how, right. how do you we don't continue know the identity that? Identity of the of the author, mm-hmm. right? So you can't like read. Artist unknown, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I think memes, yeah, are, yeah, they're the wild west. They are the, <laughs> art of the future. They are art. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, I, it can be, it can be really scary too, like what you are experiencing online. Um, so then we move into into this and and in some ways this feels like a a jump for me so for the viewers who are 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 recently becoming familiar with their with your work today you did a series of sweaters for your bfa show that had various like sayings and there were some pornographic images on them that were very clearly that and then like the work that we just showed is like moving away from very like objectively clear images of that and, and transmuting that and then and then I'm curious, like, where do the shoes fall into the practice? Because it's not something I'm clear on. Sure. Yeah. No, I think they um, fall. I actually think they fall pretty nicely. In, and I, I think that's something that can only be like, I don't know. I'm interested in the next couple months here because in, in February, I'll be doing my MA. So I'll do my MA before my MFA. And so I'll have an MA show um, in February. And I'm kind of excited to see how everything like works into the space. But the shoes also are like kind of like these math. I I think about them also as like appropriated Mm -hmm. um, things. Like they're like, I didn't make Converse. I didn't, uh, you know, invent the Converse logo. They're this like highly American um, image, this like uh, and iconic um, object that everybody wears. I feel like everybody has like a history with Converse. Um, and they're this thing that moved from being like a, um, a basketball shoe, which is like an intrinsically American sport Mm -hmm. to being like, um, uh, worn by like underground punks in the seventies and like Converse still not really like accepting that people don't wear their shoes for sports anymore. And, (laughs) and then by the nineties, they kind of come around and they start like, um, kind of advertising their shoe as being this kind of like, um, uh, thing that, um, you know, the cool kids wear the like, you know, symbol of counterculture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Counterculture. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they, they kind of have this like, um, interest, I like how the brand kind of, um, moves through history um and uh so to me they have this like there's like this idea of like um american americana like and and progress to um i think kind of goes hand in hand with um uh ideas or like things that we think about in uh uh having to do with america so i was kind of thinking about the issues with progress with these and the kind of one step forward, two steps mm. back. I don't think like progress, and I don't think progress is like really even a thing. Mm. Um, so kind of like turning that on its head. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of my face on these shoes, which I guess I did probably didn't send you enough images of, but um, it's my face on these shoes being kind of like twisted around like all of these like different oh. websites and uh, things like that. And kind of just how, um, uh, perception is like really distorted I think is um an area I kind of dive into a lot with my work and was something I was diving into with the sweaters and is something I'm kind of diving into here and then also like 
um, with the work we kind of just looked at, um, but how we like experience and view progress and the things around us, I think. So, really where I'm... so if Converse called you right now and <laughs> uh, they, they went on, I mean, this is a very common thing that's happened. And they said, you know, we like this design. We want to do a run with you. Um, like, you know, you're, you're an up and coming artist and we want to, you know, get your work out into the world. And, and we really believe this one step forward, two steps back thing that's happening right now. Yeah. What would you say to them? I don't know. I would be nice to make a lot of money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I, I kind of like, don't, I don't know. That's the, um, yeah. And that seems to be like one of the questions here. You know, that seems yeah, to be kind yeah. of like one of these central questions, especially in the contemporary moment as an artist. Sure. Yeah, I, no, well, I agree. I'm kind of well, pick up back up on, on oh, Rick here is that like you uh, you've made like a sweater, which I swear we're talking about. We'll show it at some point or we'll have it in show notes or something like yeah. you have like clothing. You have these shoes like this to me seems as if like you did a thing with Converse. You know what I mean? That like <laughs> I guess like and I feel like there's a lot of probably push as an artist to join the like streetwear join the clothing brand like have a brand yeah. and all these things like do a like the chloe simmons x converse thing like right. yeah. is is like i'm curious where you are at with that as far as as an artist but then also to like you physically did it like you already did it like it's yeah. not like something like oh i could make a shoe it's like you did you've made a sweater you've like have a clothing line sort of in a way <laughs> already but i i don't know if that's necessary the way you look at it yeah no i mean i'm definitely like in conversation with fashion and um all of those things i think i see it more as like a taking um than anything else of like a kind of like i see it as definitely just like i'm just appropriating these shoes and i'm using them to like make make work and i'm using it to like talk about how we like identify ourselves and like um, exist physically in the world. Um, and then kind of, again, kind of turning that on its head. Like it's kind of like a, it's almost always like a critique of itself too. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. Got a chat so, message here. And it, um, Madeline Bryce art. Thank you for joining the stream. Madeline says these are sick. Also hi. And Nico hi. also says hi, and that these are sick. Welcome, Madeline. Welcome, Nico. Welcome <laughs> to the show. <laughs> yeah, Nico. See you there. Good time. Good time to introduce everyone. Um, I, I did just bring these images up just because we were talking about Perfect. them so much. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's a. I think it's a crucial. I think it's a critical conversation that like what what Jake is bringing up is is that like there is this appropriation aspect of it. But it's been done and recycled so many times now that brands recognize that like getting their work appropriated is yeah. this like user generated content, <laughs> you know, the UGC, yeah. the UGC. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm definitely like within that. I'm definitely working in that conversation for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and I'm not. Yeah, I. Yes. <laughs> Well, and I think what's interesting, though, is I think you've, like, extremely successfully, like, made the art object first. And then, like, it kind of, the culture of it gets attached to it later, which I think so often under the nod, it's the other way around, where yeah. it's, like, we're kind of responding to something. And I just, like, I could, I, I, a hundred thousand percent could see really freaking cool people in major cities wearing these or wanting to wear them. Mm -hmm. And sure. I, I also think that, like, and I could go off on this and Rick, please cut me off whenever you need to. But like you are saying, I think uh, like very, I think unproblematically challenging statements that are very true to the world. Like uh, everything is permitted and nothing is possible. That is something I've deeply felt. And to have that <laughs> on the back of like a sweater versus like just like a right. t-shirt, you know, right. like this isn't the anti-social social club, whatever. Like this is like, no, like shit's fucked up. Like this is yeah. like it just it feels like it carries so much more weight, which is not a pun on the fact that it's a sweater versus a t-shirt. But like, Absolutely. I just yeah. feel like there's there's so much more there that is like actually responsibly reacting to the current moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and maybe that's rhetorical. You don't need to respond if you don't want to. But I just I feel like I I. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I, fashion has a responsibility. Like, does fashion have that responsibility? 
is, is mm. kind of like what comes out of that for me is that like does does fashion do the things that we wear carry the ability to like accurately communicate a message or carry a message and then like what's the difference between the middle of the mall the spencer's mm -hmm. gifts and and like that that approach of like wearing you know turn on to turn off in comic sans on yeah. a black t-shirt and then also wearing that like embroidered on the back of a sweater you know yeah uh <laughs> yeah no i think i'm definitely like um interested in how people um view these things and um kind of um uh asking the viewer in a way to um view themselves wearing them Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's another is another part of it. I think so. Yeah, the like body is very present. I think I, when I was young, I really identified. And I still, I to a certain extent, I still do. I love, I love clothing. I love fashion and whatever. But I, um, when I was younger, that was like my way of like really um, expressing who I was. When I didn't really know how to like communicate that in other ways. Um, and so I think that's just something that's like stayed with me. It, it, for me, these like exist as symbols, I guess. And I'm just taking the symbols and like reusing them and remixing them and putting them back out into the world. And um, yeah, so. Ski mom in the chat says, I what love that these? idea. It feels more serious than t-shirts. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see yeah. like I, and again, we can move on, cut me off here, Rick. But like, if like we, like, did you imagine someone like actually physically wearing these like are these meant to be worn as as art objects um the sweaters i say no mm -hmm. i don't think i ever really like thought about people wearing them um i was definite i i think i did a video where i was wearing the sweater the um initial pornographic sweater but it just became too i don't know i think at the time Maybe I could do it better now, but at the time, I I don't know if I could do it better now or not. I'm going to take that back. But at the time, it just wasn't working <laughs> for me. It wasn't like, yeah. I don't know, it was, it, it came off as like too much like of an advertisement or something for the sweater mm -hmm. or like, mm -hmm. like modeling this. I don't know. It just, it felt, it felt phony well, or something. Maybe an like Easter egg though, too, at the same time. Like someone yeah. who knows your other work could see that and be like, oh, hey, that's the, that's the, you know, and I feel like our culture is so based on like finding the Easter egg. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like. I, I think anyone loves to see music video and see like some little small corner that like harkens back to a previous work or something. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then with these, I've been kind of performing them more like um, the first sweater I made a video of um, kind of taking one step forward or the first sweater. I, I mean, the first uh, pair of shoes. Thing off. Let us see it if you're going <laughs> to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, taking... Rip it up. Let's go. Yeah. Here we go. Take it off. Um <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah so uh no and i and i think like I, I think the reason that jake and i are, are having are bringing this conversation up is like in some ways in the vein of like oh you should commodify this you know like we, like i hate to say it that's what i'm thinking exactly. you know but also like that is that is like s such an opportunity for us to recognize the ingrained commodification and kind of like right. the destruction yeah. of the artist the like destruction of the art object oh that's interesting uh, yeah as i come into contact with that all the time like i destroy my own art objects to make them commodities and sure. to like make them digestible like i like right. instead of making the viewer do the work of digesting, I'll do the work of digesting so it's easier on the palate for the viewer, mm -hmm. right? So like yeah. we are talking about it and we are saying like you can make money doing this if you want to, but it's it's so strange that that conversation now is so near the art right. object conversation, and and right. it's really been commodified in in a way that hopefully helps artists make money, but I don't know if it does. I don't know if it's I don't know if that's yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had people ask me to like make them a sweater and I won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> remake it. So it just doesn't seem it doesn't seem like right to do to like remake the the sweater, or remake the shoes. If they feel like they need to be singular objects and mm -hmm. um yeah, like the shoes for instance, I have been trying to figure out how I'm going to show them in a space and I keep putting them on like you know, at like eye level or something. They feel too much like a product. So I've been, um, I think I'm going to leave them on the floor and I think that's where they need to exist. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. 
So we have a video here of the shoes, maybe of the shoes, maybe of, of things going on. So now we're moving kind of, excuse me. <coughs> Ooh um, now we're moving into some of the, the, the video work here. Which are, are these a third pair of shoes? These aren't. No, those are the those are the first ones that okay. I did. The one step forward, two steps back. So I'm in this video. I'm actually I'm taking one step forward and two steps back, and it's kind of just moving me in a backward circle. <laughs> wow. It's so funny, like. I, we've never had a video artist on the show. So I'm like, oh, we're just going to be quiet and watch it for a little while. <laughs> and everyone just, just sit here and listen to us oh, not talk no. for a little while. <laughs> yeah, but we don't, I mean, we don't have to do it forever, but yeah, yeah it, it is. But no, it's, no, it's, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is new. I'm noticing this. Yeah, no, you get, you get the gist pretty quickly, I think, but. Um... Nico says, seems fitting that the laces would be untied for this performance. Oh, yeah. And Madeline asks, how do you make the shoes? Um, I have a company. There's like kind of a third party company that um, somehow, I guess, has some sort of agreement with Converse um, to like make um, these shoes. So I think that's another like kind of um, line that uh, excites me is to use um, like these companies and um, like Etsy shops, I use a lot to to kind of um, uh, have them like produce my artwork for me, kind of like maybe unwittingly mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so so like the first time we ever talked, right? And I don't I don't think that you probably don't remember this, but <laughs> I have an affinity for remembering like first times I talked to Good. people. This is really important to me. <laughs> but I I remember asking okay. you if you knitted those sweaters yourself. And you being like, no, I just, you know, there's a company in Germany that did it or something like that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and then, yeah. like, I was like, oh, cool, you know? And, like, uh, I always thought about that interaction later as, like, I hoped that that didn't come off as me thinking, you thinking that I thought less of the work because you had it made from someone else. Oh. I just needed to, like, know how you did it. And it, and, it, yeah. and it didn't lessen the value of the work. And I think that that's an important conversation when we have with artists is like, you know, like you don't have to make it. You don't have to fucking spend $8,000 on a machine to mm. knit a sweater yeah. where there's a company that already does this thing right. or 80 hours or 800 hours learning how to like knit a sweater for your fucking art. Like it can, yeah. it can be quicker than that. Right. And I feel like that's like just kind of it kind of like for me echoes the times that we live in and uh, makes it more relevant. Like I can just have whatever I want made and shipped to me and like <laughs> I don't have to like make art anymore, like with my hands. And sometimes I like to, you know, and I, I, I still make drawings sometimes. I still, you know, I, I make video, I guess, mm -hmm. but everything already exists so like why not use what already exists and um uh work like operate within those within those systems to make work uh i think is really fun and exciting for me um yeah speaking of well, which like, i have to respond like to somebody's message on etsy because i had like a pair of underwear made and they sent me a message <laughs> I, it's probably like over some confused thing <laughs> <laughs> well, we just know that Richard Serra is not sitting there like welding gigantic walls of metal, right. nor oh, is he using the, like operating the crane to get it into whatever space. Like, right. I mean, like commissioned work. I mean, well, it's like what like the artist is commissioning it happening, and then like I guess the gallery commissions the artist to to put that work into their space. So it's like I mean, yeah. commissioning and quote unquote is happening in you know a quote maybe circular. I don't know what shape necessarily, but like it that doesn't right like that's that's there's a precedent for that clearly absolutely and i mean it goes back to i mean this is gonna get into i don't know it, it goes back to duchamp like duchamp made the ready-made and now i can do whatever right. i want <laughs> no, for sure like you get the permit well and that's who and like i and this is why i, I didn't i wasn't sure how thick we wanted to get into this because like i am 
obsessed with the concept of the ready-made and mm -hmm. like kind of making like just point i almost feel like at some point you just point at something and say that is now art and that could be the ready-made right. like like forget like buying stuff or assembling it like yeah. you know like i just think that this is now I and mean, that's what duchamp's obviously like you're saying um but like i think that like the i think that our culture is obsessed with the ready-made like what is streetwear mm -hmm. but the ready-made mm -hmm. like yeah. i found it on a website i want the cool shirt mm -hmm. now it's mine i have it i own the art i'm cool now Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know? and like how is that not a commission in itself to be like i bought the cool thing you know right. like yeah. and that's and i and i hate it because i have it in me i'm like chloe i want this fucking sweater yeah. <laughs> i yeah. want your shoes so bad i want those <laughs> damn converse. but that's the and thing like, too honestly, like i size everything myself yeah like i they the, the shoes are my size the sweaters are my size mm -hmm. you know well the you sweaters can't have, have them <laughs> yeah they're mine <laughs> and if you Thanks want them they probably want to you. <laughs> I, I i i do have i don't have you like feet. cinderella's um, but yeah cinderella's yeah. sister <laughs> I can try. I can try to get in there, but it probably won't happen. Um, but like in a way, though, that's like the ultimate to me of like streetwear vibe is like yeah. it's not that you didn't get to the Yeezy drop on time. It's the fact that this fucking exists once. Right. Like, screw uh -huh. you like this. It's and beyond that, it's an expression of your pure artistry of like who you are and mm -hmm. what this means. And like until you sell it we to need a collector. More that. We... Right. Well, you know, right. But yeah. then it's still just it's one object. Right. 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 But but then yeah, I, then it questions that and then it questions that again. It's like, no, you you can't have it. But you can have it if you have ten thousand dollars. It's like you can't have right. it if you have a thousand dollars, but by golly, if you've got ten, then like <laughs> right. hit my line. And I think there's right. something really interesting too in that conversation of like how we make like objects of desire and like mm. um we like things are sold for like way more than they're actually like than they're actually like physically worth and i think like art has done that for a long time but we're seeing that with like streetwear um i feel like it was like obviously something really like prevalent with like hot kanye's line where it was like just like t-shirts with like holes in them and everybody was like why does this cost so much but everybody wanted it mm -hmm. and like the same with the iphone like the iphone costs like a ton of money and like there's no reason it should cost that much money but it like shocked everybody like oh and now it became like this like really it, or it, it made it more desirable because it like cost more than like what people could afford right. mm -hmm. and i think like there's we see like a similar thing happening with like the ps5 like you know let's let's not make enough for people right. to buy yeah you know right. like <laughs> let's also make it like super easy oh, for like coming off people to just <laughs> um yeah shoes off um that was the end of the I video think I'm no cap shoes yeah. off <laughs> but uh, like let's make, it, let's make it let's make these products like something people can't have but like want right. to have mm -hmm. and i that's something I, I, that i think is um really intrinsically american to like have that desire for something you can't have yeah um, in the sure. chat nico says we love duchamp for doing that and ikea is just <laughs> ripping off duchamp thinking face so ikea is ripping off to sean um yeah yeah and I, I i think that um these these conversations and 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 kind of like understanding i'm really interested in uh like okay so a couple of things kind of intertwined here for me is um the heaven on earth series by jeff coons oh uh, i love yeah yeah. Made in heaven. Oh, yeah yeah and um Same. whatever so so thinking about your work and thinking about his and his uh, ex-wife's um, projects there, we probably don't want to show them live, but um, <laughs> yeah, like quasi pornographic images, paintings of Jeff Koons and his porn star wife. Uh, yeah. And, and that's like at the forefront of things that it, it kind of reminds me of that. And then Jeff Koons, I, I mean, he's like, I, I think about Jeff like so much. So mm. I always kind of, in thinking about him and talking about him yeah. um but then like also like jeff as as like the uh the money market annuity marcel duchamp like jeff coons right. is like the stock market duchamp <laughs> you know and, and creating these objects i like this term objects of desire which is something i haven't yeah. is not in my nomenclature 
and I'm not oh, super yeah. familiar with, but I think it, I think it really kind of touches on this passionate chord of the hundred million dollar um, balloon sculpture. And then in mm. some ways, like the more powerful piece it to me is like puppy, which is the like, the, you know, the 30 foot tall wireframe dog always being covered with new flowers. And like that oh. is like this object of desire in that like mm -hmm. you can't even fucking own that like museums right. own that like people don't maintain those. Maybe there's right. some dude with like a villa in Greece who has like a puppy, but like there yeah. are even the, these next extreme levels of visual art that like people can't even functionally own. People can't even functionally maintain right. Which is like ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's ridiculous. It's crazy. I, yeah, I mean, I'll 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 trade my art. You know, I really like I like to trade. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it. I mean, he does. Uh, he's somebody. It was really funny when I was in town. Um, a, my one of my parents' friends, I guess, had just found out about Jeff Koons, and he was really like, he was like, well, if he never touches it, like, how do you know if you actually have a coon? Like why why can't you know like essentially like why can't um anybody can produce it then right i'm mm -hmm. like yeah but it's not a coons like it's just gonna cost a lot more like people just want it because it's coons and the same goes for like fashion designers too like i think i have like a knockoff prada bag i love my knockoff mm -hmm. prada bag hell yeah but like <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's not like some people like they just want the prada they like mm -hmm. want the real thing and yeah i'm I would want the real thing too. I can't afford the real thing, but um, well, Chloe, though, if Kim K wanted clothes. one of your sweaters or one of your show, your like, who is there <laughs> one celebrity you would you would sell to or or maybe trade? I don't know. I don't know that I care about celebrities that much. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I. Because I almost I feel know. like that speaks I to traded, the piece in a way too. Like, like somebody owns. Of it. Like somebody owns the porno sweater, the everything is permitted, nothing is possible. I don't have that anymore. I traded with somebody. Wow. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So which feels really good which feels really good to like also get rid of um mm. objects too, like to have to know that like somebody else has it. It also feels really strange too, because I'm like, are they using it the way that I would want them to? What if they put it on? Right. I'm like, what if they but... sleep in it every night? It's their night <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, they, but they could. And so it's like kind of out of my hands now, I guess. Yeah. Also, right. I made this cool ring out of the. Oh. Oh, wow. Of... Yeah. So... Look at that. I know. I'm, I'm trying to like fit it around my finger toys. If anyone, anyway. <laughs> if anyone had any doubts that Chloe was a real artist. <laughs> yeah, Here's... I was going to say, no one's. <laughs> No one's made art live on Art Brunch before. That's oh a first. Like... <laughs> I'm breaking all the I'm breaking all the rules today. Breaking the rules. All right. Well, I think we've got a lot more to talk about, and um, I think that this is also a good time to take our second break. Um, I'm going to play for our audience. Um, uh, I'm going to play "Passing Through" for our audience over the break, and um, it is a uh, six minute video so you guys can see passing through in its entirety while we take a break and um, we will be back in 10 minutes thank you for watching see you soon all right boom we're back just like that 10 minute stack um <laughs> I, I need to I need to find an opportunity to express my freestyle expertise live on stream at some point. Uh, I just haven't yet, you know. So if you're interested in in checking out Rick freestyling live at some point, hit that follow button because I that's the only way you're gonna know. Uh, thanks to everyone who's tuning in. Thanks for everyone for coming back after the break. Um, we did uh, give you the opportunity to see Chloe's video there. Um, there is sound to it. You should definitely check out her Vimeo if you want to hear the sound. We just weren't able technologically to uh, pass that along to you today. So I'm going to drop Chloe's links in the chat here, um, her website and her Instagram. And I'm also going to put the travel agency links in the chat 
if you want to follow us on Instagram, if you want to uh, be a part of Art Brunch, we have a contact form there. We're looking for people who are interested in live streaming their art practice or our guests on Art Brunch. And we've actually got some really, really cool stuff coming up, too. Um, I think, I don't know if we should announce it today, Jake, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we have some we have some good guests coming up, so you're definitely going to want to tap excited. in and and uh, stick around with us. So, so Chloe, Stay tuned. Uh, um, what is what is the deal with the umlau over the e in your name? Oh, what is the deal? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, a lot of a lot of Chloe is spelled that way. Is Chloe it? seven most famously Chloe Grace Moore? The only. <laughs> is it on your birth <laughs> the certificate? Truest Chloe. It is on my birth certificate. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so I have it there. A lot of people try to challenge it. They try to say it should be the dash in French and they, oh, uh, the dash, uh, the accent take a lot of haters. I took, I took I like French, the French. So. What is the, ex it, what is, what is that Jake? It's in French is the accent aigu. That's what it's called. It's just accent aigu. Straight line. Um, well, I think it, to me, it's very like nineties, like Girls named Zoe with the umlaut over the Z, yes. like that was very hip back in the day. I feel like it was yeah. that. Like there was a restaurant in in uh, the Central West End called Zoe mm -hmm. that I remember had. That's yeah. where Pie Pizza is now on the corner. I would go there. That, oh. like, did you feel like an affinity for that place? You're like, it's my place. It's my umlaut with the yeah, E. <laughs> I feel like that's probably where my mom got the idea. She like used to hang out in like the Central West oh. End. Oh, so this yeah. is her shirt. She probably wore this to Zoe. I wouldn't be. Oh surprised. wow. Nico That's says, awesome. Nico says, imagine telling someone else how to spell their name. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're pretty happened. unabashed here. So, so I, wait, I, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. I've been playing, oh, this is really important. I've been playing a lot of Rocket League, obviously. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a very toxic community of Rocket Leaguers, especially as we get to the end of season one, which isn't actually the end of season mm -hmm. one, but it is because Epic bought Rocket League. Anyways. Um, people have been extra toxic recently, and then my oh, only wow. response in the chat is, "Imagine taking Rocket League seriously." And then I send <laughs> that, and then they like Rocket League is. blow their fucking lid because they they just like are way more toxic because they just called them out in the most in the most simple and yeah. easy way. Imagine easy. taking a video game seriously. Oh, it's video. You know, we should take seriously though is moms that went to the Central West End in the 90s except for my mom it was in the early 2000s and she would go to uh viva and i just have to oh, ask you chloe did your mom ever go to viva the salsa what? club oh the salsa club maybe i don't know but i went there uh kind of right before court really? like right before covid um mm. a friend of mine was salsa dancing there and we were friends from grade school and so another grade school friend hit me up and told me that our friend was performing there so we went naturally and my friend was showing me how to salsa dance, and I had lots of um, older men come and ask me to dance with them. Mm. And I wow! At the salsa club. <laughs> At the well, salsa I just I felt a great affinity for that because I also had a a fun mom who would go to the Central oh, West cool. End and have fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. We gotta pay the mom tax. Yeah, <laughs> as we always do on the show, we pay the mom tax. Shout out our moms. Love our moms. <laughs> Yeah, Viva's Hi, parent company, the Viva, Viva Paper Towel Company, produces uh, <laughs> superior paper yeah. towels. They diversified. They probably own Rocket League somehow too, Rick. You know, yeah. they they're all just they're taking care of it. Viva yeah. La Rocket League. If you oh yeah. Me. <laughs> um, great. We've got a couple. <laughs> we got a couple more arts here. <laughs> Let's check it. I think. I, I think. Um, this is like one of the more performative ones that you had. And, yeah. and you, you've told me that like you've done some work, you like casting yourself as character in your, in your work and, and exploring yes. that. Would, is that, is that an accurate assessment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, using, I've, I mean, I've used myself in all of my videos and I've started to No, I'm still there. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say, maybe I'm starting not to, but it's uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, play a couple cl clips. They can. Where is here? Can you guys hear this? How in the hell did I get here? You, you two, my uh, friends. I, I, we, uh, I, I can't. But I could, I could, I could do the sound for you. Mom, I'm in this hole, and I'm cold in here, and I. 
The viewers hear it. Yeah, I know yes. the viewers hear it. Thank you. Yeah, the viewers hear it. Uh, okay, that's important. But, um... Yeah. It's my favorite, too. Awesome. I think I like I what you were doing, though. Belly. Can you, can you well, continue? Yeah. I'm going to turn the <laughs> volume off for the viewers, and you can continue this lip sync. Get, get me out of here. Uh, I'm in a hole. <laughs> that's good. That was good. That's, that's all I got for you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for... Uh, Amazing. Yeah. Um, so there's this, there's this idea of, like, of character or casting yourself into these roles and like in mm -hmm. regression it was it was or not, and well in regression it's you but you know there is there is no character it's it's almost like yeah. this this payment for the ills of society sure, it's more yeah. yeah like you're the one kind of like paying the tax or the troll toll mm -hmm. and then <laughs> in um in the the video that we played for the break i can't remember what it was called now i, I i've lost it but oh passing through passing yeah. through yeah there there were you were like kind of in this cameo role and then there was like yeah. video digital ephemera taking taken from your life and 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 those kinds of things so so how do you think about yourself as as character in your own work as character in video or performance um and you said that that relationship is potentially changing uh yeah i mean um for that yeah i did want to do a video where i was playing character i had done it before in the past um and it didn't I, this was kind of like um a second uh, a reinterpretation or like a second a second try at like doing this character thing um in high school i did a lot of plays and um uh theater things and speech team i was like one of those girls and um, and that was really fun. Um, and so I kind of, also I watch a lot of film too. So I feel like that kind of influenced it mm. and just kind of wanting to make my own little like, I mean, they're not really, they're not really films. They're definitely still like video art, but like um, kind of appropriating those like elements of film to like discuss some um, strange issues of uh like uh, dealing more specifically with how we um, interpret and understand um, characters and caricatures and stereotypes that we encounter um, online and in film and um, pretty much everywhere. Uh, so kind of like blurring the lines too between um, film and the internet and uh, video art uh, performance. So, yeah. So this one in particular is three different characters who are all um, uh, kind of three different versions of the same like Southern character who's kind of trapped in this like virtual space. And she's kind of uh, begging the viewer to let her out. And she's kind of implicating the viewer in the first one. And then this one is kind of like a like deliverance uh, version of that character, this kind of like inbred deliverance thing um, <laughs> happening, uh, completely silent. And then the third one um, is kind of coming clean about her position of like, like she's like aware that she's a video and that can be played like over and over again. Mm. And, um, but also is like much more seductive and um, you only see her eyes for most of the video. And it's just, yeah. So. Well, and there is like uh, a commonly memed new fetish in the world of being like trapped in particular things. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, so that there's like there's these memes uh. of of like women or people like trapped in in different things. Not to, you know, build a bridge too long, but I think that's also yeah. something something interesting is is that like these these ways of viewing each other become like memed and, and fetishized and. And this totally. idea of like being trapped inside of a particular thing, or even like in the 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 like suffocation videos of like being trapped in a particular thing, this is Absolutely. taking a, a different approach to that of like being trapped in the digital world or being trapped yeah. on in pixels, which I am right now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> this is a call for. Well, help. I'm curious. It is. Great. Rick, you've streamed too long. Well, and Chloe, I'm curious, like, you know, we talked about 
you know, okay, to keep us using the word trap, and I'll ex expand on it, like the trappings of like oh, I love that fashion. Band. The tra uh, trapped, great. trapped. Back off, take you on. Anyway, that was the first concert so I ever went to. <laughs> keep going, keep going, please. That's unsafe. Uh, <laughs> that like, you know, the trappings of fashion, like of like, you know, oh, the streetwear, like, oh my god, don't do you want that new Chloe Simmons, you know, steez, whatever. That like, hmm. now that like now that these like these are like you're calling them characters, like they're they mm -hmm. they have performance, like they are like you are acting like how do you reckon with the like quote unquote appropriation of the trappings of like a film and the ways you're like the you know quote unquote traditional ways of approaching a film to to you know go after something like a maybe a performance video piece like this so wait what is the question i'm confused okay I'm confused. the question I is is like I might have missed the question i think oh no 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 i i, I it might be too broad and too much of a stretch but i guess like you made fashion objects that you're saying are like divorced from fashion. Like you're not going to make a line of them. They are art objects themselves. So yeah. how is like making a video like this, like how have you touched in the things of like film where there's like characters, there's casting, you casted yourself, you're using the terminology of film, but then now this is an art object that is divorced from film theoretically, or, or is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I mean, like with the fashion objects, or like yeah, like with the with the shoes and the sweaters, I wouldn't say that they're entirely like divorced from fashion. Yeah, um, definitely like still within that conversation of fashion. I like that that conversation is there, um, and it's something to be had. Um, uh, I think that it's uh, always an interesting place to take it. Um, uh, but the with these, I, I think the the same, or with this video, it's really a, a three channel video that should be played simultaneously. So it's kind of breaking, I think like with video art, you kind of like get to break all the rules of film, you know? And so mm -hmm. um, there are, it's, yeah, you don't really have like um, the same uh, obstacles uh, that you would if you were trying to produce a film, but you get, uh, what I was trying to do here is like take different elements of film and um, again, kind of like remix and um, yeah, appropriate that um, into this. So it's there. And I think I'm like, I think with this, I'm in conversation with film and like digital media and um, I don't know, different things like that, but um, trying to um, understand it in a new way and um yeah. Did that answer the question? Sure. It does. And I'm sorry if that was way too broad. I guess I'm just like trying to get to like, it's like, it's a sweater that's not to be sold. It's a, f a film, a performance that's not to be like yeah. submitted to festivals necessarily. Like yeah. it, 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 it exists wrong, in the realm the of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I would sell right. them. People want to offer me money, please. But I just don't know yeah. that I, would, I, I make them I don't know that I make them with the intention to be like worn down the right. street. I guess once I sell them, I'm if I'm selling them, I'm selling them as like a work of art, right? Yeah. Once I'm, once sure. they're sold, they're in the hands of somebody else to do whatever they want with them, and whatever they right. do with them, I don't really know. You know, maybe they burn it tomorrow because they hate me that yeah. much. Well, jokes on you, I have your. <laughs> and <laughs> the only thing that the check clears, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just it 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 could be it could be a number of things that are outside of my control um but sure. um i guess i'm making things like as an artist within an art context and um so i'm not totally divorced from that conversation but um i'm just interested okay. in things outside of art and bringing them into it yeah. um, existing in weird middle spaces is really fun for me <laughs> absolutely yeah and i love that about your artists or your artist statement is i think it does it it is a good exploration, a good way of communicating where the work lies without being really didactic in any way, <laughs> like without teaching anybody anything. It's like a, it's like a very show, not tell kind of artist statement. And, and this work oh, is, yeah. is very show, not tell in a lot yeah. of ways, um, which is which is really an important uh, space for, you know, for the for the artist. You know, this work has to speak for itself because it's it's. Yeah you know, with the, the type of media it's disseminated in this way, you know, where this can be viewed as many times 
as people want to view it by as many different people as people want to view it and you're not there to right. hold their hand through through the process of of viewing yeah absolutely yeah okay cool uh, i think it's about time to move into our final segment 